Hello my friends, today we are editing this image, we'll start with this image and we'll end up with this image. Again, we will start with this image and we'll end up with something like this. How do we edit this? Well, first I would like to start on Lightroom and the reason why I make this tutorial is because I want to show you how to use um, Nick, of, Nick Collection Color Effects Pro and also how to create a better vignette in Photoshop. So first I want to do just some minor adjustments here in Lightroom. So I will add some contrast, maybe around plus 17. I'll take down the highlights a little bit, maybe around negative 50, negative 49. I will open up the shadows to maybe like 50, 59. That looks good. I will add some whites, maybe 44. That looks good. And then I'll take down the blacks to create a little bit more contrast, maybe negative 23. And maybe I'll add some texture, maybe 20. And this is our Lightroom edit so far. This is the before and after, before and after. Also, I want to add a little bit of um, calibration, the camera calibration. I will just take the saturations of the blue all the way to something around 80, 82. And this calibration, this is the before and after. It just popped the colors a little bit, make it look a little bit more vibrant. It's a very natural way to enhance colors into Lightroom. So now that we're done editing into Lightroom, I am going to send this image with Command E into Photoshop and we'll do the rest of our editing there. Now here we are into Photoshop and the first thing I would like to do is duplicate my layer, Command J to duplicate my background and now I am working non-destructively. With this layer one selected, I will go to Filter, Nick Collection, and then Color Effects Pro 5. Now I'll have to admit I had this plugin for years and I never really used it until recently when I started taking infrared photography and now I'm started to liking. I think there's some really good things in here. On the left side, you have all your presets, all your filters. As you can see, there are 55 filters. If you scroll down, there's so much stuff in here. And you also have tons of presets. If you go into presets, there are so much to choose from. On uh, today's uh, tutorial, we're not going to work with presets. We're just going to go into the filters. The first filter we're going to apply is Pro Contrast. And this is how I usually start editing my images in here. Once you click on Pro Contrast, this dialog appears here on the right side and the first slider is correct color cast. And I'm going to move this one almost all the way to the right, maybe around 80. And this just changed the tones in my image and I had a color cast that was more warm and now I made it a little bit cooler. If I click this off and on, look at the fog color. This is the before, it's a little bit warmer, more green, more yellow. And this is a little bit cooler with the correct color cast. Next, I will move to correct contrast. And let's see, I don't want to go too far because I kind of like the softness of the image. Maybe we'll go with something like this. And then dynamic contrast. This is more, to me, it looks like a little bit of dehaze. If I move it all the way to the right, you see the effect is having here in the fog. It's more like a dehaze. So I will go with this one just around 40 47. Let's go with that. And then I want to protect a little bit of my highlights. So I'll move the highlights maybe to 66. So let's see pro contrast. This is the before. This is the after. It made a big difference. Now let's work with color a little bit. So I'll go on the top of my um, filters here. And the first one is by color filters. And I use this one a lot. Now, if I just click on bicolor filters, it's just going to replace my pro contrast with the bicolor. We don't want to replace it. We want to add another filter. So if you want to do that, when you hover over bicolor filter, click on this plus. And now it apply a color filter. But if we open this arrow, we can see our filters over here. And the one I want to apply, um, I can't tell. It's either this moss one that has green and blue or maybe this orangey one. Let's see, that's the orangey one, and this is the green one. I kind of like the orange and blue one. Let's apply this blue one. But of course, I don't want it to my whole image. I just want this greenery to have this blue tone. So where Nick Collection is, uh, stand, stands different from other editing programs, that works with control points. If you look here at the bottom, 
we have a control po point with the plus sign and a control point with the minus sign. If we want to add this effect to some places into our image, we will use the control point with plus. So click on that and then click where you want to apply it. So now the effect is gone from the entire image. It's only affecting this area over here under my control point. These control points, think of them as masking. In fact, if I go over here to my control point and click on the mask, you can see exactly what, exactly what is affecting on the image. So I like the way it affects these uh, branches over here, but I do want to put it all around these branches on each side. To duplicate this control point, hold down option and then drag the point and it duplicates it. And I can make many, many duplicates, drag them around, put them on whatever I want to have this effect. So that's what I'm doing. I keep dragging while I'm holding down option. And now I am affecting, I am applying this uh, effect to both sides of the image. So now I have this mess of control points to keep my stuff more organized. I can go here and click on my last control point, hold down shift and go to my first control point and then click on this folder and I will put them all into a group. Now the benefit of having all into a group, I can, you know, mess with the opacity. This is zero opacity. Nothing is being affected. A hundred percent is being affected or, you know, 50%. And I think I will go with that. And that was a good starting point. Now I do want to add some color to this, uh, you know, bottom part. And I think I kind of like this violet pink for the bottom part. So what I will do, go back onto my color filter, just hover over it and click plus, and that will add another one. And this time I will choose this violet one. And again, I will go to my control point and just click on the ground and now hold down option and I can just move these control points and apply this effect all over the foreground. You have this um, toggle over here where you can make your control point bigger if you need to, to cover bigger areas, you know, whatever you need to do. And now just like before, I will hold it, I'll click on my last control and then hold down option, scroll to my first control point and I'll put them all into a folder. And now I will reduce the opacity because I don't want that much color. That will be zero. This is where we started on. And then I will just add a little hint of color, something like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Now the benefit of having it all into a group, you, I can just click on one control point and whatever changes I'll make to this control point it affects to everything else. So that looks pretty good. Now I want to apply this changes. So I'll just click apply and this will send it back into Photoshop. And uh, it will take a minute to load. And here is our image. This is the before and this is the after. Now I feel like maybe we went just a touch too strong. So I will go into opacity and maybe reduce opacity, something like that. And that looks a little bit better. Now I need to crop this image. And when I look at this image before we crop, let's look at it. There's this bright spot over here. Uh, I feel like that distracts my viewer. Their eyes gonna wanna go over outside the frame. I want them to be focused in the middle of the frame. So I need to get rid of that bright spot and also my foreground, it's way too big with nothing interesting happening. So I'm going to cut that portion off as well. And to do so, I think a eight by 10 crop will work for this image. So I am just going to go so I don't get that bright spot, something, something like that looks good and click okay to accept the changes. Now let's get into our vignetting and I will show you how to create really great vignetting. Go to your elliptical tool over here. You can take the rectangular, you can take lasso tool, you can take any kind of selection tool. I'll take the elliptical tool for this and I'll just drag a circle. If you hold down the space bar, you can move it around. And here is my circle selection right in the middle of the image. And now I will go into the adjustment layers and create a curve adjustment layer. Now with my curve selected, not the mask, the curve selected, I will move this up and this will brighten our image over there. So as you can see, it's a very harsh line onto this vignette. 
and what I need to do is click on the mask and now this properties of the mask opens up and I have this feather slider I can move it all the way up to let's see around 730 pixel feathering and this makes a really nice feathering I can even move it if I take the move tool you can hold down V if you want and I can move this bright spot anywhere I want as you can see so I'll put it back in the middle and now because it's a curve adjustment layer I can also add some color into it so if I want to cool that because right now my fog is a little bit warm I can go into the blue and maybe add a little bit of blue to that fog I can go into the green and I can add green or I can go into red and pull it down and that will add some cyan and there you go our fog became a little bit more cooler tone so this is the before and after and I think it's too much let's go take away some of this cyan and go to the blue take away some of this blue just a hint of blue we need in there something like that if we want to make it even brighter we can go to the RGB and bring it up we don't want to blow out any highlights so maybe we'll go with something like that great now I want to darken the edges on the outside so I'll take my elliptical tool again and I will make another circle maybe something about this big and then I'll go back to adjustment layer and create a curve and this time I will take it down now you see it's darkening the inside I want to darken the outside to invert this click on the mask and say command I and that will invert your mask now of course the edges are very harsh again so make sure you select your mask and feather it I'll do around 700 pixels or so and this is our before and after now that is too much I do not need to darken it that much so I'll just add maybe something like that now I will create another curves adjustment layer and this time I want to add some blue into the shadows before we do anything with color let's create a little bit more of a cinematic look so I'll create three points over here one in the middle one in the highlights one in the shadows and then I'll lift my blacks and I will just lift the blacks give it a little bit more cinematic look I think that is better great now I can go into the bloom and maybe add some blue into the shadows you see if you lift this blue up it will add blue into the shadows I will just add a hint of blue in the shadows and then if we bring down the blue on the right side that will add yellow onto the highlights I don't want to add too much but maybe just a hint of yellow and let's see this is our before and after before and after and I think it's looking pretty good maybe we lifted the blacks a little bit too much it's looking a little bit boring there so I will maybe bring this back down something like that maybe we'll even lift up this brights a little bit just to create a little bit more contrast let's see now this is the before and after and I think that looks better so let's see our whole image from when we brought it into Photoshop we started with this image and now we have this image this is the before this is the after I can of course group all these edits I can select the first one hold down shift select the last one and then command G to put it into a group and now if we think we went too far with our edits we can reduce the opacity to whatever looks good for this case I will keep it at 100% when you are done and you like your edits just right click on your layer and then flatten image and then the last thing you have to do is send it back into Lightroom to send it back into Lightroom go to file close and then save and that will send it right back into Lightroom where you started your edits I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.